Hi everyone, this is Sir Painter, and today we're going to paint Lord Croak and his very large and elaborate throne. So I've sub-assembled it to make it easier. Um, this part here will be sprayed wraith bone. Alright, let's start off with Dark Reaper and we're going to dry brush this paint all over the stone from So the main areas to dry brush as well are areas where the light would hit. Normally I would do this with a uh, with an airbrush, uh, but I just wanted to make a video that shows this can be done without an airbrush with a lot of dry brushing. Um, so yeah, mostly it's just air, um, dry brush in the corners and the lines where you find it, uh, the raised sorry, the raised areas. Um, yeah, and now the next layer is Thunderhawk Blue. This is where you'll see more of the, um, uh, I would say NMM, but it's using those principles. So you can see on the side here, I'm focusing a lot in the middle of it. So this is where the light would be hitting. Here we go again, in the middle. And the piece of rock on the front that would also be um, focused onto. The middle here is going to be uh, a, a, a bit heavier because the light will be hitting here too. Um, and then I go over it with Friend Risen Grey. Very light though, super light. Because it's quite a thin paint, so it's quite easy to like become like a normal. It's quite hard to dry brush with if you have too much anyway. Um, so yeah, I'm just focusing on the areas where the light is hitting mainly, but also getting those edges Yeah, here. So this will be quite strong um, Catching the Sun because it's all exposed Again the raised areas where the Sun is hitting it or whatever light source it's gonna be And this is quite good for OSL for later on as well. It's like a foundation. So now I'm focusing on the, the corners and the middle of this part and the other corner. Again, this is a bit like NMM uh, theory with the high contrast. So you got a very uh, bright corner uh, where the light is in, super, super bright. And then outside of that, there's a mid-tone, which would, would be the Thunderhawk Blue. And then the darker areas would be um, Dark Reaper, and then that will lead into uh, Chaos Black or Chorus Black. And you can see now it's starting to show, right? Some parts are brighter than others. I'm just going back to the areas where I need to do more dry brushing to intensify the color.
So now I use a fine detail brush. Go over the uh, edges now where I dry brushed. Uh, I focus more of the paints in the corners or where the light would be the strongest. Uh, but you can still go all over the model if you want to with Fenris and Grey. I'm kind of dry brushing here as well because the paint dries really fast. Yeah, so now it's wet, it's normal, it's thinned down, sorry, and it applies very well. But when you, when I get to certain other parts, I kind of start feathering or dry brushing the um, colors to intensify uh, where the light is hitting it. So that's so you in, so you'll see me at times uh, go back and forth very quickly over one area. That's just basically dry brushing slash glazing slash mixing. I'm also using this time to add some scratches to the stone. So you'll see me right now flick it up, and I try to keep it as thin as possible. Because chunky cracks don't look as if 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 all the cracks look chunky, then it doesn't look as interesting. You know, so different thicknesses is fine, but still try to keep it relatively uh, thin. And what what I like about this paint as well, it's when you paint with it, it looks very bright, but then when it dries, it uh, tones down a bit. So you've probably got to keep giving it different layers and so on. Just like when you use reds, I found you painting reds is the same kind of experience. So along here I'm edge highlighting now the brightest corners or corners I've forgotten to edge highlight. Just the back here. But I make it thicker where the light would be coming from just to intensify it. As you can see now I've still focused on the corners and the middle parts of the front of the throne because I really want to have a very strong contrast. If you want to, you can mix your fenrisen with white. If you really want to make it even brighter, that's also fine. So I'm even edge highlighting in between uh, the grill, should we say? So I'm using this highlight, all fair and grey, to really pick out the uh, high points of contrast. So I'm just doing the corners and in the middle. I kind of, I didn't change my mind, but now the paint is a bit drier and a bit thinner. I just went over the rest of the model with it. So it's much lighter, but the areas with the the, the, the light is hitting will end up being brighter. So this is just pure or firm grey. It's like a lighter grey. It's not too white, so it won't be too um, strong. And I'm just focus. I'm focusing more on the corners here, you see, or where the light is hitting it.
I use pterodon turquoise to add some um, definition to the base or some kind of different textures. Uh, I used it mainly on the armrests. I now use pterodon turquoise as a wash by filling it down with water and going over all the emerald areas. It's time for dry brushing again. So with my crazy brush, we're gonna use side bright green and just edge high uh, edge hollow. Dry brush the areas uh, of the stone that are hitting the light. But again, you can lightly go over the rest of it just to cover that the patchy areas of pterodon. Again, so you can add more more layers when you dry brush as well. Just focus on. I focus on where the teeth are and the top of the head by the eyes and near the feathers and the tips of the tails. That's where my light is hitting, so I focus there with my dry brush. Blaster green. So I, again, just like the previous step of the phone, now with this lighter color, I focus on the areas where I want the lights to hit the strongest or to where I want more highlights. So I'm focusing on the, uh, the face of the statue and also the for the top part, where the teeth were, where the eyes were, where the tail was next to the feathers. I'm going over some details now because there's less paint on my brush so I'm just going over the other areas just to highlight them now Corax white for the I'd say final dry brush to pick out the light areas and just to give it a nice um, edge highlight without spending hours panel lining each part of it. Um, I'll still edge highlight later, but uh, this is just a very quick way to, you know, bring it out and add some depth to it and increase the contrast as well between the dark and the light. See, I'm focusing only where the light would be strongest for the face. So back to Gauze Blaster to edge highlight the sharpest areas. Uh, but actually I ended up just edge highlighting everything. Well, most of everything. But I still kept the Gauze Blaster thickest um, where the lights would be hitting.
But just like the phone, I also added scratches on it and lines. Use the white paint just to pick out the sharpest edges. After the dry brush and before you can see there's kind of a gradient effect going on, I used the white, especially on the tongue, to uh, just uh, intensify the lightest area. So I'm just picking out all the orbs and the areas that will have OSL later on. I use Corex White as a base color and then I use White Scar to just go over it and make it as clean as possible. So when we add the OSL fluorescent paint later on, it'll be much smoother and it'll really pop. I use Dwarven Gold from Scale 75 because it's a nice warm gold and it applies really smooth. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, you may use Retributor Gold as well. They're quite similar.
also painted the bone, the rock on the base, dry part also, so it's ready for the next step. And as you can see, I've glued on the other part of the phone, so it's all fully assembled now. Except for the piece I told you about that would be Wraith bone, that part is at the back and that will not be glued on till later on. So now I'm just going to dry brush the uh, dry bark areas with a uh, scrag brown or any light reddish brown is fine. Because I, I really want to warm up the, the model now because we used a lot of cold colors before like emerald. Dry brush the lower areas of the vines with our green camel just to give it a nice natural green tinge. I use our green camo again to paint all the leaves. Using the same green, I actually dry brushed the part of the leaf that connects with the brown vine. Just add a bit of gradient to it.
So I use Wraith Bone to paint all of the bone and the stone rings. I've also glued on the separate piece of the throne at the back. So it's all assembled now. So now I use Creed Camo Contrast Paint and I thinned it down with 50-50 uh, Lamy Medium. I dry brushed it all with Scarsmith Green. I focused more of the paint on the corners or the brighter areas, similar to what I did with the throne in the beginning. So just use that technique. I dry brush Nurgling Green on the corners and as you can see there's a slight gradient appearing now. So just find all the areas like the corners or any areas that you feel uh, you want to add some texture or variation to it.
light with Nagel and Green, I use Screaming Skull to dry brush the brightest areas. I thinned down some Agrax shade and I focused it more on the bottom parts of the horns. So after I've done the bones, I will move on to the stone rings and I'll just add the Agrax into the cracks or wherever I feel there might be some weathering uh, or where the, um, as you can see on the stone rings there are, there are some parts that later on I'll paint gold. I will paint over those parts with Agrax too.
Now I dry brush the tips of the bones with Rayphone. Screaming Skull to dry brush even higher, focusing on the tips again. At this stage I have glued on the snakes that will be on the throne, I've based them with wraith bone. I wasn't happy with the leaves, so what I did, I went over them with Contrast Dark Angels. Um, I thinned it down with some Lamium, 
and then I just went over all of the leaves, some of the vines. I just want to add some variation to the greens that are on the model. I added skeleton hole contrast paint over this little head and then I'm lightly dry brushing Wraith Bone now. Super light, like there's hardly any paint on the brush. I'm just going over the base. Oh, I've already based it as well. I added some texture paints, nothing special. Uh, I like to do that to be honest, just to um, save some time while I'm waiting for other paint to dry. I'm just going over all the areas that I want to add some definition with Wraith Bone. Uh, so as you can see, I've also added some white to the tablet on the throne. Now I'm using Cantor Blue just to paint all the gems. But any dark blue is fine to be honest. And then I use Lothram Blue to add a little dot just to give some shine to it. I've sub-assembled Croak so I haven't glued on his arms or his um, headpiece. So I'm going over the whole body and arms with Plague Bearer and I use Dwarven Gold for the gold details on his arms, his weapons and his headrest and so on. I went over the scrag brown with wildwood. I thinned it down with some um, lamia medium. Not too much, probably about 20%. I lightly dry brush scrag brown over the bandages, just to add some definition and uh, bring out some details. I like to use scale color for my fluorescent paints, but it does really smell though. So when I airbrush it, um, it has a very horrible after smell. So, but it does go away after a while. I thinned this red down quite a bit. I wish I didn't now, but I, I just wanted to thin it down so I can glaze um, where the OSL would hit. So these gems are not gonna be super bright, but bright enough to cause some um, glow on the nearest objects. Uh, and I really enjoy doing this part, to be honest, because I, I really feel it adds some depth and some interest to the image. And it's also focusing the eye to where Frog will be sitting. So I added some of the glow onto the stone head 
and the stone ring, uh, some of the armrests and uh, parts of the snakes. I added a second layer of the same red fluorescent paint so I wasn't really happy with how white the gems were and again I'm just glazing and intensifying the glow Added some speed yellow, so the areas that you can see are still white on the gems, these will become more yellow in colour. I plan to have some old cell behind Croak coming from the consoles behind him. So now I'm dry brushing Corex White on the areas that will be later covered with the uh, fluorescent paint. With the same color, I'm going to lightly dry brush um, where the old cell will touch as well. So I'm going over the snakes, over the uh, back of the throne which is where I will be painting green later on. These orbs will also be green, so I'm just dry brushing around them. So you can just paint it on, uh, you can just glaze the paint on it. I usually keep it, um, I start off where the lightest area is and then I just glaze outwards. So I've got a warm red OSL coming from the gems and then I have a green kind of earthly energy coming out from behind Croak. So I wanted to combine these two colours together. Depending on how thin the paint is, the fluorescent paint, uh, you can build up the glow so you can take your time with it. I didn't want these orbs to be too bright, so I just uh, left a lot of white showing through them.
For the feathers, I just wanted to keep them simple, so I painted them red. Uh, the feathers on the throne are purple. And then I just quickly used some airbrush to edge highlight them, add some gradients. But I think, you know, if you wanted to, you can do some, practice your freehand on here. It's a really wonderful opportunity to try it out. It was quite simple, I just painted in with contrast paints, golds and so on. I've put the colours in the video description, you may find them there. It glazed green contrast, dark angels contrast on the back where the scales are, but that's about it really, everything else was very simple, hedge highlighting, and no special tricks, um, so yeah it would be quite simple to do. I also didn't spend too long on him because I was going to add some OSL onto him anyway, some glow. So usually when I have a, a miniature that has some OSL, I tone down the details. Again, you may use a brush for this part. I use airbrush just to save time and convenience. Uh, focus more of the green in the middle where the white area is. Just really go over it there, glaze it, make it strong and then the light will get weaker as it leaves the light source.
added a dot of white sky in the middle of the orb just to make it look hotter and brighter. So the orbs are going to be green as well here. I'm going to add some OSL glow onto the side of the skink's face. Hence, I didn't add too much, too many details to it. I did uh, make the eyes nice and bright, so when the OSL hits the eyes, they will also pop out too. I also glazed it over his gold arm. Uh, sorry, his gold shoulder plate. This is the last part now and Croak is finished. I hope this tutorial was useful. Uh, please leave any comments or suggestions in the comment box below. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you all. I uh, hope it was useful. Thank you, bye.